Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. We will get started with our greeting ritual for this Lent. And uh, today, uh, after the, the greeting responsiveness, we'll uh, go through uh, Jesus. Remember me was singing through twice today. So if we can get that. Go. The Lord be with you. Sunday. Charlie did, got the right idea. She brought her blankie. So uh, if anybody feels tired, just go over and, and you can bribe her with some candy or something and take her blanket maybe. Um, as we do enter into worship this morning, um, we are adding to our prayer list today Jenny Best. That's Tom Best's mother. She's recovering from surgery and also from uh, the pneumonia uh, related to COVID. So we want to add her to the prayers. Pam says that she's doing better today than yesterday. Uh, but, um, you know, it's still a long way to go to recover from uh, those two things at the same time. So uh, Jenny is in our prayers today. I ask you to keep her in your prayers throughout the week as well. Our Wednesday is uh, Bible studies at 1030. And that is a time change as well that we changed that a couple weeks ago um, to make it a little bit easier for those who have things be at by noon, so hopefully you can join us Wednesdays at 10.30. Our next slide shows us our vision and purpose uh, for this month, um, and we're just going to kind of continue this probably throughout all of Lent, uh, uh, right up to Easter time too, because it's such a pressing issue. Um, but uh, with the crisis in Ukraine, uh, the council has decided at our meeting this last week that this um, vision and purpose uh, period of time will go towards Lutheran disaster response. Uh, which is got uh, lots of ministries going on already, uh, not only in Ukraine, but also surrounding nations. Uh, they got blankets, they got health kits, they got uh, other ministries that they're supporting as well. So anything that you can do to support Lutheran Disaster Response through our vision and purpose giving this month will be uh, greatly appreciated as uh, we find ways to support our brothers and sisters in Ukraine during this uh, tragic uh, time of, of conflict and war that they are experiencing. Those are the things I wanted to share here ahead of worship. We'll prepare our hearts now for worship with our prayer music. Thank you. 
invite you to stand as you're able to join in our call of worship. Blow the trumpet in Zion and let people tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming. The God of glory is near. Never has there been such darkness and never have we imagined such glory. The ruler of all ages shall triumph with greatness and power. This is our Lord, who is above all others. The earth quakes and the heavens tremble. The sun and the moon are darkened. The stars no longer shine. The Lord utters his voice, and all hosts are commanded. Truly the day of the Lord is great. Who can endure it? Hallelujah. Only God can endure it. We'll sing our opening hymn, Shepherd like a shepherd, Savior like a shepherd, lead us.
Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow your ways. Assure us again of your love. And help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you. And all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. Amen. Let's sing our hymn of praise. Lord, let my heart be good soil. So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur to the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But he said, O Lord, how am I to know what I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove and a young pigeon. He brought him all these and cut them in two, laying each half over against the other, but he did not cut the birds in two. And when the birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between the pieces. On that day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. The word of the Lord. A reading from Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, 
my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I am confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, that I will seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in the shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high upon a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. If my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me to a level path because of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they are breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. The word of the Lord. A reading from Philippians chapter 3. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me, and observe those who live according to the example you have had in us. For many live as enemies of the cross. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and the glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation, that it may be conformed to the body of his glory. By the power that you also enable him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, Stand firm in the Lord in his ways, my beloved. The word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it, how often have I desired to gather your children as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. So I was watching uh, some YouTube videos this week with my son, and one of the videos we were watching uh, was animal encounters, uh, snakes versus things that the snake regretted attacking. And one of the clips was a chicken, a mother chicken, who was trapped in a, in a corner of this room as a king cobra had come in and noticed the chicken the mother chicken had several chicks with her, and the king cobra thought he had an easy meal coming. Except for this mother chicken was not about to let any king cobra, let alone this one right in front of her, take even a single one of her chicks. And with wings out flapping 
and with her feet flailing about at this snake and her beak biting at it, she was able to safely move every one of her chicks out of the way of this snake and onto another area where they were protected again. It was fascinating to watch this mother chicken take on a king cobra. King cobras uh, are notorious snakes. I wouldn't want to take one on, and I'm significantly bigger than them. <laughs> but here this mother chicken, just flapping her wings and beating at this snake, held it off and kept every one of her chicks safe. I couldn't help but think of this passage as I watched that video this week. It was rather serendipitous. It's not like I was looking for it. Uh, I actually clicked on this video because it had to do with snakes and trace. Uh, of course, he has a pet snake and he's quite protective of snakes and he was angry that the narrator kept talking about how dangerous snakes are. And, but there we were watching him and I was like, hmm, so this is the mother hen imagery. This is what Jesus is talking about when he says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I have longed to gather you like a mother hen gathers her brood under her wings, protecting them against all the dangers that this world throws at us. This Lenten season, we have been using our black sackcloth in place of ashes. For those who have not yet received one, we do have plenty of sackcloth pieces here to pick up when you come forward still for communion today. The sackcloth that we wear this Lenten season, much like the ashes that we usually use in Lent, is a reminder of many things. And today, is a reminder that we lament for all those times that we yearned for a mother hen to spread her wings over us and to protect us against the threats and the dangers of this world. And for us, there are many things that are those king cobras that come into our lives. Loss of job, being forced to move with no security or safety net, illness, of course, this last two years with the pandemic and a number of our families being impacted by COVID and having different family members go through it, in some cases multiple times, in some cases really light and, and mild, but in others very severe and very serious. We lament for all the times we yearned for our mother hen to protect us, to gather us under her wings. Of course, as we think about the things that we wish we could be protected and gathered underneath that wing of a mother hen, we also lift up our lament because we know in so many ways we still have it very easy and very comfortable. I mean, I even reflect on, on the times in my life uh, and over the last 20 years in particular where my wife and I and our three children have had to move for various reasons, sometimes very quickly and sometimes with not much safety net, but there was always a net there for us. There was a close friend who had a home for us to live in for a while or my mother who graciously welcomed us in with all of our animals that we had at that time and so on. We, we, we've had it actually pretty good. So our lament also includes not only those times that we wish we had more of a mother head covering us with her wings, but our lament also includes those for whom we know they are really needing a mother head. We could think of our brothers and sisters in states like Texas and Florida. Our brothers and sisters who are identified as LGBTQ, 
and are now in states where legislation is being passed that harms their very identity. We can think of our brothers and sisters in places where voting rights are being denied for various and many reasons. We can think of our brothers and sisters in Ukraine who are fleeing from their homes with nothing more than a backpack of what they can cram into that backpack, wondering if they will have a home to even return to, wondering if the loved ones they left behind will be there when they return. We can think of Ukraine because it is constantly in the news right now, but we know that there are other places in the world where the same scenario is unfolding daily, where people are being forced to move place to place with nothing more than what they can carry, with nothing more than the hope that what they left behind will be there when they go home, or that the loved ones that they left will still be there when they are safe to return. This is our lament. And this is why we wear our sackcloth in Lent. Because its scratchiness and itchiness reminds us that this world needs a mother hen's wings to cover over it. Of course, when Jesus spoke to Jerusalem, he was on his way. He was not yet there. He knew he would arrive on the day that we now call Palm Sunday, but it was the entrance festival for the Passover celebration. And in that entrance celebration, they would have a parade where a person representing the coming Savior would parade into these words, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Jesus knew when he was going to arrive to Jerusalem. But until then, he cried out in lament for that very city. For the city that refused its sackcloth to remember its own lament. For that city which didn't even know it needed a mother hen to protect it. Jesus' words now extend to us, not just to Jerusalem, but to the entire world. Today he would cry out, O Earth. It doesn't quite have the same syllabic rhythm. O Earth, O Earth. God's full creation. How I have longed to protect you as a mother hen protects her brood under her wings, and yet you have refused. The good news in the midst of our lament is that Jesus, the Savior, has indeed come. Jesus, who stood there and said, oh, how you've refused to be protected, didn't stop his work because he knew he would be rejected. Jesus, who knew that prophets are killed inside the city, didn't refuse to go to the city where he knew he would be killed. He knew that for the sins of this world to be defeated, he had to overcome those sins through his own death and resurrection. And that wasn't going to be accomplished outside of Jerusalem, that was going to be accomplished inside Jerusalem. There, after that celebratory entrance, the events of his passion would unfold. Jesus, like a mother hen, would outstretch his arms on the cross to protect all of God's creation. All of God's creation, from those for whom the laws hurt, to those for whom illness strikes, for those who flee from the bombs and the soldiers. Today, Jesus calls upon his church to 
join with him and to become a part of those wings that protect those around us. So he takes that sackcloth off of us and instead gives us his feathers. His feathers of mercy and compassion, his feathers of kindness, enabling us to join in with that protectiveness. Think about the ways our church has in the past done that very thing. When we have taken on those wings of mercy and compassion, in the past, have we not taken on those wings of compassion and mercy when we've partnered with our neighbor church here, the Chins, and have welcomed them in and been a part of their mentoring and tutoring as they acclimated to a new life here? Don't we still sometimes feel protective towards our neighbors because of that relationship we established with them? Don't we take on the feathers of God's mercy and compassion as we reach out to the alternative school and bring those cakes that are so lovingly made for youth who've never had one for a birthday before except for what we provide for them? Don't we feel that sense of protectiveness for those students, some of whom we've never actually personally met? But yet we would feel protective of them because we know they fall under our care. This is the call of Jesus this Lent. That he takes the sackcloth that we wear as our lament off and offers us his comforting wings so that we may continue to provide protection for others. Aside from our council deciding Tuesday night that our vision and purpose would go towards Lutheran disaster response, specifically for those in Ukraine, our council also voted positively to assist an effort undergoing in our community to bring an Afghan family who are refugees safely into Monmouth and provide them housing is just for the initial 90 days. This is an opportunity for us to again be a part of those feathers that Jesus gives to us to offer compassion and mercy. And once this family is identified and known and we know they are coming, and once they begin staying here, a relationship will be developed and we will feel that protectiveness towards this family because they're in our care. Because they're going to be a family that we are assisting. They're a family that has had to leave everything behind. They come with nothing more than what they can carry. They don't have the hope and prayer of ever being able to return to Afghanistan, their lifelong beloved land. They don't have the hope that they'll ever see the loved ones in Afghanistan they left behind again unless they are safely able to be able to leave Afghanistan themselves. They have no idea what will happen to all that they've left behind. All they do have is the hope and prayer that someone here will be the mother hen. And a group of citizens here in Monmouth took on the challenge to bring and welcome one of these families here and the wings of compassion that we join in with allow us to say we will be protective of this family while they're in our care, while they are adjusting and acclimating to new life, while they are lamenting and still wearing their own sackcloth for the losses of their lives. This is Lent. It is a season of great lament and great awareness to our own laments and to the laments of our neighbors. But it is a season that reminds us that we do have a mother hen, Jesus the Christ, 
who not only protects us, but also gives us his own feathers that we may extend Jesus' protection to another. And we give thanks as we trade up our sackcloth for those feathers and protect not only those in our care who are immediately next door, but the entirety of God's creation and all within it. Amen. At this time, we will share together with the Creed. I invite you to stand as your people. Having been gathered under the protective wings of our Almighty God, we confess our faith using these words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. You gather the church into a community of mercy and grace. Unify Christians around the globe in efforts to proclaim good news, even in the face of opposition, and to protect those whose lives are imperiled by the gospel. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You create the entire universe and call it good. Hinder those who would cause further destruction of our planet's fragile ecosystems and augment the calls of those who advocate for thoughtful stewardship of the Earth's resources. Merciful God, you raise up leaders committed to love and justice. Nurture in those who govern patience to receive criticism, openness to new ideas, and courage to change course when needed for the sake of the common good. Merciful God, you hear us when we cry to you. Attend to those expecting a child and console those who have experienced miscarriage. Comfort veterans enduring post-traumatic stress. Shield those endangered by domestic violence. Uphold those who are ill or grieving, especially Diane, Matthew, Linda, Dave, Cassie and family, Amber, Julie, Jackson, Chris, Pat, Isla, Charlotte, Norman, Carolyn, Mary, Anne, Eloise, Cecil, Tad, and Jenny. Merciful God. You kindle faith that moves us into action. Guide children and adults preparing for baptism or confirmation. Empower Sunday school teachers, confirmation leaders, and parents who share their faith with younger generations. Give us all a renewed sense of vocation. Merciful God, you welcome us into your heavenly realm. We give thanks for those whose labors on earth are ended and who now rest with you. On the final day, gather all of us with them in your loving arms. Merciful God. Accept the prayers we bring, O oh God, on behalf of the world in need, and for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now for offerings gathered through many and various ways, given with the spirit of joy and thankfulness, we pray. Extravagant God, you have blessed us with the fullness of creation. Now gather us at your feast, where you offer us the food that satisfies. Take what we offer here, Come among us 
and feed us with the body and blood of Christ. In whose name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We sing now in silence. of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all the drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the life is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. The table's been prepared by our Lord, so that all who come may be given his protection. Come, receive his gifts. Let us pray. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing our closing hymn today, Songs of Thankfulness and Praise.
children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. Go in peace. Jesus meets you on the way. Thanks be to God.